just a part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, she's trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens. Now, Reese had a similar message saying that she was trying to make a basketball play, but she also took aim at the officiating. I mean, for inside, I mean, I think we were playing really hard. Um, I think we went up really strong a lot of times and we didn't get a lot of calls. And going back at looking at the film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle. Megan McEwen is with us now. She's a studio analyst for the WNBA on ION and also a former uh, female college basketball player. We should note that EW Scripps owns both ION and Scripps News. Great to have you here, Megan. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, what did you make of this foul by Angel Reese on Caitlin Clark? Uh, I didn't make anything of it because it was a basketball play. It's been really interesting to see Twitter take off over the course of the last 24 hours. Calling this even the, using the word controversial is ridiculous. If anybody has watched women's basketball over the course of the last five to 10 years, they understand that women's basketball is a physical game. It is similarly physical to the NBA, to men's college basketball. Women are out here competing, trying to win. That foul was handled really well by the officials. Angel Reese was going up, trying to get the block. There was excessive contact when the player, Caitlin Clark, was in a vulnerable position. The windup from Angel Reese, and obviously missing the ball on a basketball play, resulted in a flagrant one foul. However, the larger issue at hand is the fact that people are trying to push this narrative that players are jealous of Caitlin Clark and that she's being unfairly targeted. That's simply not the case. What separates college athletes from the pros, not only talent, but there's a mindset. Pros hate to lose more than they love to win. Therefore, you're going to see these women coming out and competing at the highest level every single game. That's what they're paid to do. That's what they're supposed to do. I have now seen more negative uh, conversations surrounding this foul by Angel Reese on Caitlin Clark that I saw when Draymond Green put Rudy Gobert in a headlock a couple of months ago in the NBA. It's absolutely ridiculous. People who are watching the WNBA have to understand this high level of physicality is normal, expected, and it's how you win championships. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point on Draymond Green. And, and obviously, social media is a place where if you're looking for some positive takes, it sometimes can be very hard to find. But what is it about the WNBA this season where it seems like when you have a play like this, it dominates the news cycle as opposed to even how the game was played or who won? I think there's multiple factors here. People have been, one, watching the game a lot more. And a lot of that is because of this rookie class that has come in, Angel Reese. Cameron Brink, Caitlin Clark has brought a ton of eyes to women's basketball. People who are just watching women's basketball for the first time aren't used to seeing this level of physicality and how good these pros are. And it's really interesting to see the narratives that have surrounded the game saying that players are jealous of Caitlin Clark. Nobody is jealous of Caitlin Clark. She's come in and yes, did a lot at the college level, but at the pro level, she has not necessarily been even the best rookie in the WNBA this season. Angel Reese has been the most consistent rookie if we're looking statistically. She's averaging a double-double. Caitlin Clark, as well as she had played in certain games, hasn't necessarily been as consistent, which is okay. She's a rookie. She's still adjusting to the level of physicality that comes at this at the WNBA at the top. So as soon as people can understand that it's going to take some time for their favorite players to adjust to this level, things will be much easier for everybody involved. Yeah, what can fans do to have more positive conversations about what's going on in the league right now? If I had the answer to that, I would be yeah. a gazillionaire and I would be on a beach somewhere. So I can't control, unfortunately, the behavior of people watching sports. But understanding that these women who were in the WNBA before are pros for a reason. They are Olymp Olympic medalists for a reason. They are making millions of dollars in advertisement and endorsements for a reason. There are so much talent in this league and getting a better understanding of the history of the league is something really important if you want to come into the WNBA sphere and have these types of high level conversations. There have been a lot of women before Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark that have come in. There have been Cheryl Swoops, Sue Bird, Shamiqua Holesclaw. You go back and forth to the inception of the league, there have been great players from top to bottom. And understanding that that greatness has been here before is really important in mm -hmm. moving forward. And when you look at the attention that the league's getting, even those negative conversations, and it feels like across sports in general, no matter what the sport is, people love the drama. They seem to hook onto that as much as they do maybe the X's and O's and the outcome of the game. I mean, is this good for the growth of the WNBA? 
for the growth of the WNBA, that people are talking and taking so much interest. Why can't there be great rivalries amongst players in the WNBA? Look on the NBA side, bird magic. You had back in, you have LeBron versus Steph. Yep. There are so many different ones. Dork Nabisky, Tim Duncan. We never talk about, oh, foul play, there's jealousy happening between those players. That was never the narrative. But people want to pit women against each other. And that's what's really unfair about some of these rivalries that are, are coming to be is they're for the wrong reasons. Caitlin Clark's a great player. Angel Reese is a great player. It's fun that they're competing. That goes back to a couple years ago when Angel Reese was at LSU. Hey, all the way back to when Angel Reese was at Maryland and Caitlin Clark was at Iowa. Mm -hmm. These are great rivalries that we should embrace and be excited that the women's game is getting to that level of having those great rivalries that the men's game has had for years. Studio analyst for the WNBA on Ion, Megan McEwen. Always great to have you. Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys. And don't